This is the Realme X7 Max, an alternative to the popular Realme GT, and is made for the Indian market. Globally, it'll be sold as the Realme GT Neo. The X7 Max and the GT Neo look to be the same phones as the regular GT, except they have a high-end MediaTek chipset replacing the Snapdragon 888. I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's see what they bring to the table in our full review. Looking at the Realme X7 Max, you wouldn't call it flashy, but it's still rather catchy, with a glossy stripe accent and shiny Dare to Leap logo. Same thing with the GT Neo, it even comes in the same colors. When it catches light in just the right way, its textured matte finish seems to sparkle. Unlike the Realme GT, this back is made from plastic, not glass. The phone is overall on the lighter side, but it doesn't feel cheap. The display is a 6.43 inch AMOLED with a 1080p resolution, a fast 120Hz refresh rate, and a punch hole for the selfie cam. It's just like the screen of the Realme GT, except that this one has Dragon Trail glass protection and supports HDR10, not HDR10+. The fast 120Hz refresh rate means that swiping and scrolling the UI looks extra smooth. It's all quite responsive too, thanks to a 360Hz touch sampling rate. However, we weren't able to get any of the games we tried to run at above 60fps, just like with the Realme GT. The display itself is really nice. It's sharp, and as an AMOLED, quite contrasty too. Colors are vivid by default, and can be made pretty accurate if you play with the color settings. And max brightness is respectable here too. We measured up to 430 nits using the brightness slider, and this can get boosted up to 640 nits in auto mode when out in bright sun. For audio, the Realme X7 Max 5G has a traditional headphone jack and a pair of hybrid stereo speakers. The top speaker is also the earpiece. You also get Dolby Atmos support. The speakers are very similar in quality to those on the Realme GT. They earned a rating of very good on our loudness charts, and sound quality is decent, but not particularly impressive, with some lackluster highs. For your biometrics, the Realme X7 Max has an under-display fingerprint reader and is quite fast and responsive. And you get 128 or 256 gigs of storage on board, which isn't expandable. The biggest difference between the Realme X7 Max and the Realme GT is the chipset. Rather than running on a flagship Snapdragon 888, the X7 Max has a MediaTek Dimensity 1200 5G, which is built on a 6 nanometer process. It doesn't quite reach the high benchmark scores of the GT, but performance is still flagship grade, comparable to that of phones that run on a Snapdragon 860 or 870 chipset. Games run great, if you ignore the lack of high FPS support, and the thermals here are decent for something outside of a dedicated gaming phone. Plus you get 5G connectivity, and the interface runs smoothly and hiccup free. This interface is Realme UI 2.0 based on Android 11. It's quite clean and straightforward. You have a smart sidebar, quite similar to Samsung's Edge panel. It's a convenient place to hold shortcuts for apps and functions. Another interesting feature is that you can open supported apps within a mini window or a larger floating window, handy for multitasking. In the personalizations panel, you can find a bunch of options for changing the look of your interface, from icons to themes and always on display styles. And you have a GameSpace app, which stores shortcuts to your games, as well as performance and notification options. The Realme X7 Max has a 4500 mAh battery, just like the Realme GT. Though perhaps due to a more efficient chipset, battery life is better here. The X7 Max scored a good endurance rating of 110 hours in our proprietary tests. The phone also supports 50 watt Super Dart charging, and was able to go from 0 to 60% in half an hour. Even though it's slower than the Realme GT's 65 watt charging, it's still quite solid. Alright, onto the cameras, which are exactly the same as those on the Realme GT. There's a 64 megapixel main cam, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 2 megapixel macro cam. 16 megapixel photos from the main cam are solid, with low noise, punchy colors, and plenty of detail. It's not exactly a flagship grade camera, but it's quite decent. Portrait shots don't have stellar subject separation, but they are good quality wise, with nice detail, sharpness, and colors. The ultra wide camera is just average in quality for the class. Its photos have a different color rendition from the main cams. Contrast and saturation aren't great either. 2 megapixel shots from the macro camera are decent. You get enough detail for this resolution, and the colors are nice. Getting a sharp photo is a challenge though, because of the lack of autofocus. 
Selfies are taken with a 16 megapixel front facing cam, and these have good detail and contrast and decently wide dynamic range. In low light, the main camera holds up pretty well quality wise. There's a decent amount of detail thanks to the laid back noise reduction and colors look true to life. The dynamic range is okay, with shadows that aren't totally crushed and highlights which aren't all blown out. Turning on night mode has a subtle effect. You get some of the highlight detail restored, but that's pretty much it. The ultra wide cam shoots nighttime photos which are dark and soft with limited dynamic range. But there is night mode support, and it not only fixes up the clipped highlights, but also makes the photos much sharper. Videos can be captured with the main cam in up to 4K resolution at 30fps. This footage is solid with plenty of detail and low noise. The colors are quite saturated though. The ultra wide cam can only shoot in 1080p resolution and is not very impressive. The footage is lacking in detail with dull colors and some visible noise. There is electronic stabilization available for your 1080p videos from either camera. We weren't very impressed here. Major bumps and shakes get smoothed out, but there are plenty of smaller ones left behind, and the footage is softer. So that's the Realme X7 Max 5G, or GT Neo if you prefer. There's a nice looking design, a great AMOLED screen with a fast 120Hz refresh rate, stereo speakers, good battery life with decently fast charging, and good cameras for the class. And while you get a MediaTek chipset, it's flagship grade. All of these add up to a flagship killing package. Plus at the end of the day, this phone offers pretty much the same user experience as the Realme GT, except for the charging speed. So if you can find the X7 Max or GT Neo, either one is worth recommending as a cheaper alternative to the Realme GT. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.